this is, this is, this is. Episode 421, let's go, let's go. Uh, this week has been insane, you guys. Birthdays, parties, not birthday parties, you know, like aside from birthday parties. Birthday parties, parties. Um, MXPX is getting very busy. We, we're practicing. I'm trying to set things up. I'm trying to go check on things, trying to get merch ordered. You know, we have uh, some shows coming up. Well, we have one show coming up that's announced um, September 17th in Quebec. That's Canada, everybody, Canada. So it's near Montreal. It's like right outside Montreal in a town called St. Therese. We're playing Music for Cancer Fest. Can't wait. It's going to be such a blast. I've been there before. Goldfinger's played there. I've played their acoustic. Um, I'm really looking forward to MXPX doing the full band, full show. It's going to be a blast. So September 17th, MXPX.com. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get to it. I'm doing a voicemail episode right now. Lego. Hello, I'm a seven-year-old girl. My name is Reagan. I'm from North Carolina, and my favorite MXPX song is Quit Your Life. I want to ask you a question. When are you going to post out your next song? Hey, Reagan. Thanks for calling. Um Quit Your Life. That's a cool one. I like that song a lot. Um, bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> she was there. Thank you so much for calling. That's cool. You might be our youngest caller so far. I appreciate that. I love that. Um, when is our next song coming out? That is a good question because maybe soon. Maybe very, very soon. That's right. Um, I'm going to give you a little inside info. You listen to the podcast you deserve information before anybody else. Um, we're, I think we're, I think we're going to release a cover song. I think we're going to do, we're, we're definitely going to do a cover song and um, we're working on it right now and it's not done yet. Um, just started, just decided. So maybe in a month, maybe in a month, uh, probably before our show, before September 17th. Okay. And follow MXPX on Instagram, Twitter, or or Facebook, or whatever, whatever you enjoy. Follow us on there, and we're going to start working on things really soon. And we will be posting clips and letting you guys in on some of the, the top secret stuff. So follow us there. Follow me, too, because, you know, I'm just an extension of, of MXPX as well. So I uh, appreciate you, and, and, and uh, I'm excited, and I'm, I'm excited, yeah. But as far as like MXPX songs, I don't know. We, we are working on the new album and it's not, it, it's getting more and more done, but it's not done yet. So uh, we'll start letting you in on some of that too. Make sure you guys uh, get on and, and give us your voice. I want to hear your voice. Like the best thing aside, of course, from a like or a heart of something is when we see a comment from you guys because we read those, you know, and, and I, I know they say don't read the comments, but it's it's important to just know that people are out there. And so I appreciate you. Thanks, Reagan. Let's get to the next caller. Hey, Mike, this is Steven from Wisconsin and a lifelong MXPX fan. And I've got some questions for you about the rave in Milwaukee. Uh, so first of all, let's back up. The first time I ever saw MXPX Live was uh, summer 2005 at the Warp Tour. And as I'm sure you remember, the Warp Tour in Milwaukee is down on the lakefront. So it's in kind of a nice area. And when you guys were playing, you said, man, it's nice to play at Milwaukee somewhere that's actually nice. Usually we're stuck at the rave, which is haunted. That's what you said from from the stage. So then the next time I saw you guys play was fall of 05, and it was actually at the rave. That was the Reliant K co-headline tour, which was awesome, by the way. And once again, you said, oh, man, we're playing at the rave. This place is haunted. Have I ever told you guys that story? This is what you said to the crowd. And then you didn't tell the story. So I feel like every band has some crazy story about the rave. My question to you is, what is your story about the rave being haunted? And a follow-up question, if you're willing to answer it, and you will not offend me, what do you honestly think of the rave? And the reason I say you won't offend me is because my friends and I have all been to the rave probably a 100 times, but we all kind of consider it a dump. Um, the acoustics are bad, the sight lines are bad, 
uh, but we're thankful to have it because it allows us to see the bands that come through like MXPX. So although we're thankful to have it, we don't consider it a very good venue. And whenever we're able to go somewhere else, we're always, we always feel like it's uh, a better show experience elsewhere, but nothing better than home sweet home. So we're thankful for it. So whatever you have to say about the rave, Mike, uh, we can take it. <laughs> so, um, Mike, thank you for all the music. And um, if MXPX comes anywhere near Milwaukee, I'll be there, even Chicago. <laughs> uh, but thanks for everything and uh hope you're doing great bye steven what's up what a great little topic here i'll answer your second question first uh and then i'll i'll tell you more about the ghost um the rave honestly it's the ghost that that really make it kind of creepy and weird um i always had good shows there we we always enjoyed playing milwaukee and even the rave, even though, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a dump, but I didn't ever saw it as a dump. It was more of a historical building because uh, you go underneath and there's a full on building underneath. There's all these rooms that you don't know about unless you start exploring. Um, there's a whole like side club as well. Like, uh, but, but anyway, there's a, an Olympic sized swimming pool in the rave underneath and the swimming pool has a, a court that would be over it and, it and it used to, I don't know if it still works, but it would open up and there's the pool. Um, there's a huge ballroom, but anyway, okay. To answer your question, no, I don't hate playing the rave. Like I really actually, we have a lot of memories there. We've played there so many times. So, it's kind of just funny now. And, and, and of course, now that the ghost thing happened, the haunted thing, that one night, every other night I'm there, it's like, it's weird. But, um, you know, we, we always thought it was kind of just a little creepy that the bar slash hotel that we'd all go to either before, but usually after show, we would go down the street, like a couple blocks across the street there's a hotel uh that jeffrey dahmer had a room in and lived there for a while like maybe it was before it was a hotel it was the building and he definitely had some bodies up in them fridges so <laughs> we would always be in this bar going like jeffrey dahmer he used to live right up there this is so weird like and then at some point they they uh they redid the whole bar. The whole hotel and bar was completely made over, renovated, and looked really nice. And, and it probably still is really nice. And we would just continue to go there and go, yeah, this used to be the place where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer used to, you know, like things like that. But um, that adds to the creepiness of the rave. Um, it adds to the charms, if you will. And I also remember there's a Taco Bell down the street. We ate at it a lot. Um, the 90s and early 2000s were definitely Taco Bell years, for sure. <laughs> heyday, heyday Taco Bell years. Uh, not so much these days, but um, anyway, Jeffrey Dahmer, we never saw him. We never saw his ghost. That's not what the ghost story is about. But let me, let me go into it. Let me go into it. So one of the times we played the rave, I don't, I, I don't remember. We've played there so many times. We've headlined there. We've, we've been su main support there, you know, in the early days. So, like, it's been all over the place. But um, you go in, and, and it's a dark building. It's old. You go in, it's, everything's a little dark. And you go into the back dressing room, and there's, I just remember, we had our entertainment center. Back when we were doing full semi-tours and stuff like this, we would have this giant road case that would, all the crew guys would ah, push it up in into our dressing room every day of the tour. So I woke up, seemed like a normal day, woke up, went into the dressing room, and it's got all these drapes, like, I don't know, just kind of dark, um, bohemian, hippie style, maybe Arabian style, like, like you're in a tent kind of vibe. It's really nice. It's comfortable, kind of cool. Um, probably better than what the real walls look like. Um, so that was, I think the day when we had our giant entertainment system, we're just having a good time doing our thing. Um, we've got our crew, Neil Hunt was my base tech and JJ 
JJ Janes was our guitar tech and we had tour manager and, and merch person and tour manager is usually also front of house. So that seems about as many people as we'd have back then, maybe a monitor person. Um, so fairly lean crew. Nowadays we have more people than that, like almost always. Um, but it was the end of the show. So we did our show. Everything was cool. We had, you, we usually do this. We'll go down. There's like a laundry room downstairs in one of the rooms with a washer and dryer. It's really creepy down there. You're like, somebody definitely was tied down here and like left to die because this is really freaky. And you can walk through those ballroom, the, the pool room, and nobody's in there. And people have seen things. I've heard things. But so we're kind of creeped out, right? Like we're creeped out. Nobody's, you know, nobody wants to be by themselves there. And as soon as the show is over, we all like, all right, we're going to the bus. We went to the bus. That's where we're hanging out. And Neil went back to do a dummy check. And in the rave, there's a, a floor, like stage, floor. And along the floor, there is on every side there's a balcony and then there's stairs that you can go up on on stage stage area and then in the back of the room there's a staircase that goes up so neil went in everybody else was out he, he was like hey i just need to do a dummy check make sure i didn't leave i had a weird feeling i might have left something so he went to the stage went to the dressing room made sure everything was good there was nothing there and before i tell this story before i tell you what happened Neil comes back to the bus and he looks white, just white as a ghost. <laughs> like we're, we all look at Neil and we're like, you look like you've seen a ghost. Like what happened? And, and he didn't say anything. He was just like blank catatonic zombie, you know? He's like, I don't know. I super freaked out. You know, he started slowly telling us the story. He doesn't even like talking about it today. And so here we are back. Neil's in the back dressing room, clears it. Stage is good. He comes out by the stage and the whole floor is dark. All the balcony, it's all dark. There may be a few, you know, there's a few lights. It's not pitch black, but it's just dark. And he comes out and he sees, he's walking from the stage and he looks behind him so he's walking towards the exit. He looks behind him where the back, where the, where the dressing room was, where he just came from, comes a figure, all black, a shape of a person, but the, but the, the image was blacker than black, blacker than midnight. It's the negative space. And the person didn't walk, it floated. This image floated, apparition, whatever you want to call it, uh, dark, what, what do they call those, like shadow people? It was a shadow person. It was a shadow. And it went out of the dressing room, floated, went up the staircase, along the balcony on top. And then it started coming down the staircase. And then it started across the long rave dance floor towards Neil and it's floating and he just froze for a second and just turned around and ran out the door right and there's a hallway you have to run and then some stairs stairs that you come down and then our bus is parked in the parking lot right there but I, I don't it's like he was thinking what if I hadn't turned around and left you know like would it have attacked me would I be dead right now you don't want to stick around and find out, you know, like that's a gamble you don't really want to take. And to this day, uh, I don't think you could fake something like that. Like Neil is not, he's a funny guy, sure, but he's not the type of guy that's going to lie about something. He's not the type of guy that's going to even just joke about that kind of thing. And just the look on his face, there's no way he was joking. There's no way he was, he was pranking us. So that's why I always say... <laughs> The rave is haunted. Thanks for your call, Stephen. Let's let's get to the next one. 
Hey, Mike, what's going on? This is Phil. Um, I know you've addressed Spotify irregularities on the show before, so I apologize if this is boring. It may just be in that same vein, and you might want to disregard it. But otherwise, uh, I was wondering, every time I go to listen to Life in General, the original Life in General on Spotify, uh, they have the date as 1995. And, I mean, I'm pretty sure, and I mean, it's documented that Life in General came out, like, pretty much late 96. Uh Wikipedia says November 96, and I mean, I was there, I was very young when it came out, but I mean, I remember 96 as well. I was just wondering, why does it say 95 on Spotify, and why can't that be corrected? I assume it's uh, Capital Christian Music Group bullshit, but just wanted to get your take on that, and if it's too boring, (laughs) sorry, and I've been a fan since pretty much uh, that year, 1996. I was like 14 that year. So thanks a lot, Mike. Love the show. Uh, Love the music. Keep it up, man. Take care. Dude, thank you. Yeah, that's a weird thing. I don't really know the answer. I would say that it is, uh, it's actually a universal thing because Universal Music Group owns our whole catalog. They bought it from, I guess, Tooth and Nail, who uh, maybe Capital Christian owned them or EMI, something like that. Gets a little confusing. But um, why can't it be corrected? I don't know. Maybe it can and it just hasn't been brought up. Now, like, is it something on my priority list to do, like me personally? Not really, you know, but I would love it to be fixed because I hate it when things are wrong. There's so many lyrics on the internet that are wrong of mine, my lyrics, MX Peaks lyrics, whatever. Google translates, you know, what they think I'm saying and sometimes they'll try to correct it, you know, because I'll, I'll say things in a different way that's kind of like a saying that's obvious but it's a different way of saying it. Like a good example would be in doing time. I'm like, um, I remember time. Wait, is it? Um, I got through it. I feel fine. I went to school and did my time. In a sense, I'm out. In a sense, I'm free. The lyric is to do what I want to be. So Google thinks, oh, you're, you're not saying it right. It should be to be what I want to be. But really, I meant to say it the other way, to do what I want to be. Why? Because I thought in my head, oh, well, if I want to be something, I need to do that in order to be that. Not be something I want to be, you know, you have to do it in order to be it. So it was just my little like, you know, thought twist in there. And Google gets those kind of things wrong all the time. And I'm sure that there's a lot more inconsistencies than we even can imagine on the internet just because it's you know it's data entry and it's human fallibility and things aren't aren't always going to be perfect but um i appreciate you noticing that because it is important i mean i i I do care when when our records came out i think life in general did come out in 1996 i would say probably in the spring or something like that um i don't even don't even know (laughs) 95, I think, was on the cover. We put on the cover out, and then and then 96 came Life in General. Yeah. And, and the reason why it makes sense that it's 96 is because we recorded it twice. We recorded it twice. We recorded it um, at Robert Lang Studio probably in 95. And then... Scrapped that, used some of the, you know, some of those demos ended up on on Let It Happen. But 96 was probably because we we had to re- go and go down south to see Cravac at West Beach Recorders. And we recorded there, Life in General, two sessions. We did like a week and a half. Maybe it was two weeks. And then we had a, like a couple week tour. And then we had to come back and finish it and i remember the last song i finished before i went to the airport the guys had already started driving home the day before and i'm like i'm gonna stay here we gotta finish this you know record and the only thing left is this vocal you know this vocal so i stayed and i did chick magnet so i was singing chick magnet up until literally the moment i grabbed my bags and steve drove me to burbank airport i went home so um yeah, good times. 
All right, next. I, I don't know about the Spotify thing. I don't know if it's going to get fixed, but maybe someday. We can, we can all dream. <laughs> Here we go. Next, uh, next voicemail. Hello, my name is Jeffrey, a longtime listener of the podcast and fan of MXPX. And my question actually goes to the uh, Let It Happen Deluxe Edition that was released. Uh, I loved that album. I uh, loved listening to it. And I was just curious about some of your reflections on that period, as well as I was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about the possibility of that album going gold. And there was a campaign, I guess, apparently about that to um, get that album to be gold. And so I just wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Uh, thank you for all you do. I'm looking forward to, to hearing about this. And thank you again. All right, Jeffrey. Uh, let it happen. Hmm. Yeah, the deluxe version, that was after Secret Weapon came out, I think, and or, or right before. Um, so we had, that was our era of working with Tooth & Nail again. We came back, we did a deal with Tooth & Nail, and in turn, they, they gave us back my publishing, basically. Uh, and that, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I haven't thought about that in a minute, but... The deluxe version, we, we got together with them. We did some photo shoots. We did um, a bunch of promo. And, and the idea was it was very close to going gold. And they were hoping that it would go gold, but it, it never did. And I think the reason why was, one, they didn't listen to me. But <laughs> I had so many, so many great promo ideas. Uh, and two... There was not a lot of momentum right then, you know. It was, it was um, the 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 music business was going was already down. It was down. Tooth and Nail was not doing well. Most labels were not doing well at the time. It was very very hard to sell records. It was it was hard to to find people and hard to get them interested in new music. So that was kind of, in a lot of ways, the dark ages of so far of the music industry I, I guess you could say also the pandemic was a little bit of dark ages too and it still is we're just tr trying to crawl out of that but but back in in 2007 2008 2009 2010 in those years it was really really uh hard to make any kind of uh headway with uh, sales and marketing and promotion and all of that um, everything was just changing very quickly and it needed a few years to like, okay, this is what we're doing now. So, um, that's a big reason why, why it didn't go gold. I mean, I think if, if, uh, if it let it happen had, had come out much, the deluxe version had come out much sooner, like a year or two after let it happen, then it would be different, you know, but you know, it's just really hard to bring things back that late in the game when it really wasn't a record that we, I mean, the deluxe version, of course, we signed on to promote, but Let It Happen, the first version, wasn't released with our best interest in mind. We didn't like that. We were pissed because we put out Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo and they put out Let It Happen on top of it. And it like really, I mean, you think of it, you go to it, oh, I love this band MXPX. I just saw some promo for their new album. I'm gonna go to this record store and get their new album. Half the time people don't know what the new album is and they go, what's the new album? Well, the newest one just happened to be Let It Happen because it came out right after Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo. And so people would go there, see 32 songs or whatever it is for, it was priced way down, $7, $6, $6.99, things like that. For 32 songs, you're gonna get $6.99. It's a no-brainer. You're going to buy that thing right there. And then people that really knew would, would often still choose Let It Happen. They'd be like, oh, but slowly, slowly going the way of the Buffalo is the one I want. That's the new album. But this is 32 songs for $7. I'm just going to get this. And if I like it, yeah, later on I'll get the new album, right? So, like, you could imagine, like, slowly going the way of the Buffalo. This is how we want to present our band right now. 
and then Tooth and Nail comes over the top with Let It Happen, which is literally B-sides and demos and things that weren't finished, things that weren't mixed fully, things that, that needed a lot of work, a lot of edits. And that's the first, and, I, and I'm not saying that it's terrible stuff, but like, it's the kind of music you might want your f true fans to hear. Be like, okay, now that you really like our, our what I feel like are our best songs, check this out. That's fine. Like, that's all I'm saying. It, it was a misrepresentation in a lot of ways. But it's kind of fun to talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all leads to where we are today, which is <laughs> in complete chaos. No, uh, where we are today is, is it's hard, but being in charge of our own destiny is so important as a punk band as a band that got signed early and were really, really focused on the music and touring and playing shows and putting out albums to realize there is some important steps that we need to take on the business end and that we didn't take, you know, in the past and, and to sort of grow into those epiphanies to learn like certain things about how the world works. Um, uh, it can only happen the way it happens or else it's a different life. It's a different experience. It's a different career. So I've talked about this a lot, you know, in the past or, you know, on the podcast that even though, yeah, sometimes we bitch about getting ripped off by record labels and being treated badly in, at shows or, or whatever it is, right? It's still like made us who we are today. It still got us to where we are right now. Now, if, if we had been treated a little better and, and been given our full royalties from day one, would this thing behind me be a golden castle? Yeah, probably. But you know what? I don't want a golden castle. I want Monkey Trent Studios. I love this place. I want what MXPX has, I want. And I want to keep and I want to share. You know, so uh, if anything, it's helped us. You know, all our, all our struggles along the way, all our experiences, good and bad, have really made us grow into the band that we are. And we have this new record that we're working on. So excited about it. I mean, it's, it's a new record. You're always excited about a new record. But I told you guys probably last year, I was like, I'm going to start writing a record and it's going to be, it's going to be better than our last record. And I so far feel like it's a no, no problem. It's definitely better. So there's that. There's that. All right, let's move on. Last one, in fact. Hey, Mike, it's Derek from Lexington, Kentucky. My friend Neil, probably about 2006, 2007, uh, did a photo shoot with you guys in California, I believe it was. And you were squirting uh, ketchup and mustard at each other. So mm -hmm. maybe you might remember that because of that reason. But mm -hmm. uh Oh, no, that kind of got me thinking, uh, you know, do you remember that shoot and any other good photo shoot uh, stories you might want to tell? So, yeah, there you go. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Dude, thanks for calling. Yeah, um, I remember that. I remember that shoot in particular. It was on Warp Tour, and we were probably in California, I guess. You, you probably mentioned that maybe, but... Um, if I don't remember correctly, I think that was Panic Era. That might have been, and, and I could be wrong, it might have been 2005, which was really the last full Warped tour that we did. We did a week or two weeks here and there on a few a few of the, the later, later Warped tours. But back to the photo shoot. Yeah, Derek, uh, wait, what was his name? Sorry, let me... Pull it back up. Hey, Mike, it's Derek from Lexington, Kentucky. My friend Neil. Okay, he, sorry, Neil. Why did I forget Neil? I should know Neil. Uh, yeah, I, I do remember. We talked to Neil, super easygoing guy. He had this idea of, like, I just want to get some colors and get, get you guys with ketchup and mustard. We're like, let's do it. That sounds fun. So we just did this, like, barbecue vibe photo shoot. I think, if I, if I don't remember correctly, I think he did a few other at least one other location or something. We might've done some stuff like by the buses or something, but, but that was a really fun shoot. And we've done so many 
so many photo shoots and I, I never feel like we're good at it. You know, it kind of takes, it takes practice. So like if, if it's been a while, you kind of got to get comfortable in front of the camera again. And the same kind of goes for videos. Videos, the more you're on camera, the, the more natural you start acting, I feel like, at least I do. And uh, with photo shoots, you know, our very first one was, it was either Brandon Ebel or Brandon Ebel from Tooth & Nail, the, the owner of Tooth & Nail Records, or Karen Mason. Um, and I want to say... I want to say it was Brandon because we were just at the studio. And we, were, we were recording our first album, Poconatcha, at a vast studios in Wallingford, Seattle. It's like Seattle area, U District. And this Swans truck pulled up and was parked next to the studio. It wasn't there for us. It was there for like the next building over. And right at that moment, we were doing a photo shoot with Brandon. Brandon had his big camera with a fisheye lens, like the Beastie Boys fisheye lens. And he was just taking some pictures of us for whatever, you know, just to have some stuff. And um, those pictures ended up, and then the Swan truck was there. So we, were, we took some photos in front of the Swan truck. And some of those photos ended up being used on our 17 seven inch, and, which was our first seven inch single. Uh, that's a cover song, the Beatles, uh, saw her standing there. And, and then I, I don't know if, and I think some of the booklet pictures of, in Poconatcha were Brandon's, Brandon's photo there. And so our second and our first real, like, cause he wasn't technically a photographer. Like it's not what he did. He was a record label guy, but as we all know, <laughs> small business owner, you gotta, gotta work for, your, you know, do all the jobs, wear all the hats. So anyway, cut to our second photo shoot ever. Poconatcha does well, or I guess is doing well, and we have Teenage Politics coming up, and Tom is in the band. He's the new guy, so we need new pictures, and that's where Karen Mason comes in. So we go to Seattle, and we meet with Karen Mason. She is a legendary Seattle photographer. She's photographed every grunge band that you've ever heard of, Soundgarden, Nirvana, all those. Um, at the time, we didn't know her because we didn't know anybody or anything. So, so, so we met her and she was so nice. She was this like really, really beautiful rocker chick. You know, like had like really, really white hair and dressed in all black and took great photos. And, and it was so kind and so nice. And um, she took our pictures. She, she had us, you know, we sat on the, on the curb and we were like wearing all our normal punk gear that we normally wear like every day. I had my, uh, I had a jacket that was like, it's hard to describe what kind of jacket this was because it was not, it's not a jacket that even exists, I think today in today's fashion, but it was borderline, it was like either like almost like a work jacket, but also a sports jacket. And I had like all these spikes in it and patches on it and stuff, but it wasn't black. It was like blue, <laughs> you know? So it's just funny how the aesthetic, you know, it's so, it's so like, I don't know, clunky and really unthought out. But at the same time, there's a lot of passion that went into some of the jackets that I wore and some of the, you know, sweatshirts, I would put patches on hoodies and things like that, you know? Um, I still do that now and again, but I was just thinking, man, I used to do that all the time. And, you know, as I've gotten older, there's been less and less time to sit around and sew patches on a hoodie, and, you know, and I've sewed some of them myself. And a lot of times I would hand them to my mom and my mom would sew them on. And then, you know, you fast forward to later in life, hand something to my wife and she can sew it on. <laughs> I handed her a pair of pants the other day that had, has a, a big, a big split in the uh, pocket area. And so the pocket, the inside pocket actually f falls out and comes out of the hole in my pants. And so if there's like keys or anything in my pocket there, it'll like come out and be like ding, 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 dangling outside my, my pant leg. Super annoying. So anyway, I used to do a lot of that, but Karen Mason really was, uh, 
really great for us because she had such a kind demeanor and could could just like all right can you move like that way slightly and that way and we're just like no problem whatever you want karen <laughs> and over the years we had so many different photographers uh that have been great you know and of course you've seen jared scott's work on tons of our stuff and he's awesome and and there's there's a ton of uh of great photographers um i can't remember the guy's first name but his last name was scott key like a double last name but i can't remember his first name he he did the the photos of us on the convertible for before everything and after for all those promo shoots when i had long hair so the, the idea with that shoot was we had this broken down convertible. Like sometimes we were driving it, but at the end of the shoot, we were outside in the hood and there's smoke coming, bellowing out of the hood, which we, they had like a crew of people. So like if you see smoke bellowing, bellowing out of a hood of a car and it's a photo, chances are that's fake. And, and ours was fake as well. So like they staged it and, and brought in some production for that kind of stuff. So... But yeah, I mean, it was great. It was great to like work with all different types of, of photographers and some get more elaborate than others. A, a lot of photographers will just look for a spot like, oh, that's a cool wall. All right, location one, cool wall. We'll do that. We'll do, oh, cool stairway, location two. And maybe we'll do, you know, uh, something in the forest. Or, you know, like it, you just, you pick... You pick backgrounds that you think will look interesting in, in, in a photo, but um, there's lots of different ways to do that, you know, and, and so doing the things with the props, with the car, you know, they rented the car, um, they rented this bar, so it was all just another reason why we spent so much money on before everything and after. If you listen to last week's episode, 420, a lot of, a lot of gems in there, a lot of uh, stories a lot of disclosures, a lot of secrets unveiled. So check out last week. Anyway, uh, back to the photography thing. Yeah, they, they rented, we just went all out and we had uh, a wardrobe person. We've had, a, I mean, this, this particular photo shoot, we had a wardrobe person. We've had wardrobe people at a lot of different photo shoots um, and video shoots as well. But um, the before everything and after promos and marketing photo shoot, that was, um, that was probably, I would say probably the most we spent. I mean, cause I'm just trying to think of other, like ever passing moment photo shoot was great. We did, we did it in a f studio, which was just a white, you know, it's like a big warehouse. Think of like a city flat, like a, fl uh, yeah, flat, you know, we have a big warehouse white walls and you can move things around. So, I mean, that it was so basic and we just did a bunch of photos all day. Um, going back a record from there, Buffalo, slowly going, going the way of the Buffalo. Um, ever passing moment, Buffalo, teenage politics, panic. Those were all women. And Renee did panic, Ren Renee McMahon, I'm having a little trouble remembering the names of the ever passing moment photographer and the Buffalo photographer. But if I Googled it, I, I could find it, I'm sure. Um, but with Buffalo, we went to Seattle and we, I wouldn't say we rented, we might've rented, but I think if you just throw a bar, if you're not in an LA, if in Seattle, it's much easier to get permission to do a few photos. So we went into this bar that had buffaloes in it. It was really cool. And we did a bunch of photos all over the bar and we just probably ordered a bunch of drinks and ordered things to like, you know, support their business and said, hey, can we take a few photos? And we also did the photo shoot of us on bikes. All of us were on bikes, Yuri, Tom and I, kind of like a bike gang, but they were like beach cruisers. Um, that was from Buffalo and that was, I think her name was Maria, Maria. Yeah. Yeah. It's Maria. Somebody that's really, really, uh, got enough time on their hands. Please put it in the Facebook, my career podcast group and just put it in the comments or something on this post. 
I would love to know some of the names of the photographers we've worked with. <laughs> so I don't do research for this show. And, and, and of course, I don't listen to these, these um, voicemails before I, I play them. I just get the latest batch that are in there and see what the, you guys want to hear. You know, so that's the way it is. If there's something like not even for the podcast, like now and again, somebody will call me and be asking to be on the podcast as a guest I don't put those, of course, on, on the, um, on the, you know, on this episode, but that happens as well. So I'll just edit those out if I get those. Um, but if you want to call, call me 360-830-6660. It's in every show note. So just go down to the show notes of any podcast, any of my podcast, and my voicemail number is right there. So leave me a voicemail. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, okay, let's wrap up this photographer thing. I think uh, I think I need to look up some names. And, and if I could put a list of how many people we really have worked with, it's got to be it's got to be over twenty. It's got to be over twenty. I mean, just we've been a band for thirty years now, and geez, I mean, it just adds up after a while. All right. I was just thinking about that 30 year thing. We have merch coming. Yes. So stay tuned. It's not up yet. We don't have it yet, but we have more merch coming. All right. MXPeaks.com. Derek, thank you for that call about photographers. Kind of fun. I haven't thought about that aspect of it in quite a while, but um, it does, you know, it, it does like, take effort. It does take effort to get good photos, to get good press photos, get good promo marketing photo photos. And it's something you have to like kind of think about plan for. Um, we used to just literally just whatever the record label or the a r person would tell us or our manager, that's what we would do. And nowadays we, <laughs> it's basically still the same. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, nowadays it's much more of a partnership with our team, you know, and we're, we're all on the same page. And, and if I make a mistake, I try to fix it, you know? So it is, is what it is, but, um, we're really, really excited about the, the future of MXPX, not just the last 30 years, but the years ahead. And like I said, working on this new album, um, working on, be working on a cover here, um, soon. So stay tuned. All right. And for those that did listen last week, I hope, I hope you gave me some suggestions on, uh, gifts I could get for my wife, but I haven't seen any yet. I haven't seen any, so I'll take a look and I'll, I'll see it. But, um, if you have any suggestions, let me know. So far, I've gotten a few other, I got her a card. I got her, got her some shoes that she wanted. I got her her, uh, kind of like a um, eye massager. It's like a thing that goes over your eyes, but people say it's great for headaches and stuff like that. It's like, oh, she gets headaches now and again. So I got her one of those. And that's a throwaway gift. That's like almost like a stocking stuffer. So like if she doesn't like it, it doesn't matter. Like don't use it, no big deal. Just extra, I think it's important to get like a few little extra trinkets that are like, oh, that's cool. You thought of me, you know? And so, so that's like a side, but my real gift is I got her two plants, two plants because I killed two plants of hers last year. And I feel like it's only right to replace, uh, I got her different plants. They're not the exact same ones, but I don't think that matters because, because luckily I haven't killed her, her favorite plant, which is this giant fig tree plant. It's, it's big. It's like as tall as me, if not taller. And it go, it, it lives in our bedroom. And if it's mad, if it's like not happy, it droops. And now and again, it, you know, if it's not happy, it'll lose one of its giant leaves. Uh, but for the most part, it's pretty happy. And, you know, and if you, you kind of like pay, it's weird how plants can be happy or mad, like what? But I'll close with this. The other day, Holly planted a mint, a mint tree, a mint plant or flower. I don't know what it is. A tree? It's not a tree. It's a plant, a mint plant. <laughs> and watered it, put it in 
put it in the in the sun or what or not in the sun put it somewhere and then the sun got on it and it went Wah. she's like oh my gosh oh my gosh we got it and so she brings it to the sink puts it in the sink starts putting water in it immediately this plant starts moving it starts twitching like and then like one of its one of its stems like perks up like goes like that and then it's like the other ones are twitching twitch twitch like it's moving and it's like moving towards the sun you know and it's like it's alive these things are alive you know like these things i get i, I don't know what, what would happen if a plant didn't have oxygen does a plant need oxygen or just sun and water i don't know another thing that would be easy to google that i'm not going to do <laughs> but it just tripped me out. Just literally, we're sitting there just watching the miracle of, of life in front of us. So, bad news for you vegetarians out there. You're killing plants that have feelings. I'm sorry to say. Um, but that's the cycle of life, and that's how it works, I guess. I love it. I, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I've been trying so hard to keep a positive attitude about things and I have not always been successful um, but there's a real need for it really there's a huge need for it and for instance Lil Duvall he's a comedian does music Florida guy I think he's about my age which kind of trips me out you know but he's hilarious and and uh, he he just got he was on his four-wheeler and somebody in a car rammed into him and he was in like Nassau, like the Bahamas. So he wasn't in the U S and the whole, through the whole ordeal, he like went to the hot, got flown to the hospital and he was trying to stay positive. And he's like showing on his social media, he's showing these people drill into his knee. Like he's not asleep. He's like, they're drilling into my knees, filming this. I'm, and we're like, what? Like, okay. And then, like, his next post was, like, you know, a bunch of scrapes that he had. He's like, I didn't even notice these scrapes because my knee hurt so bad. And uh, my point is, is at the end, he posted something that was, like, a, a DM from one of his fans saying, like, you really helped me. You know, it's the power The power of the mind is an amazing thing. The fact that you could stay positive and people watching that could see that and learn a, a valuable lesson that no matter what happens if you can find a way to stay positive, somehow you're going to get through it much better and much faster. And whether that's true or not, I don't know, but I think it sounds pretty dang good. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with positivity. I'm going to keep it going. I encourage you guys to do the same. And um, when things bum you out, just get some perspective on it. And uh, I'm not saying push your feelings down and don't don't feel things i'm saying choose choose things choose things that's it that's it it's a choice but um yeah like i said you do you i, I i'm not worried about you i'm not worried about you i'm not worried about me either so don't be worried about me we're going to be good together i think that's what's important is sticking together mxpx has been kind of on the dl for a minute but we're getting very busy now and you're going to start to see a lot more from us and I'd love to see a lot more from you for that matter. All right. So I guess I'm saying I want to call you all out, call everybody out that listens to this. And um, if you see me, if you see MXPX, say hey, say hi, give us a shout, whatever on our post or, or you know, whatever it is. Would love uh, would love to hear from you guys. All right. Uh, I don't know what's happening next week. I'm doing another voicemail episode this week because I got so much going on that every day isn't like a new whole project I'm doing. And uh, yes, you'll hear about it soon. In fact, real soon. All right. Until next week, mxpx.com. Appreciate you. Shout out to Bob McKnight for editing this, for doing his thing, producing the podcast, keeping the positivity absolutely alive. He is a great guy. When it comes to positivity, he really, I got to say, he helps me keep it chill, keep it, keep it, uh, keep it in perspective. There you go. That's right. Very grateful to be here. 
very appreciative to have this podcast that I can even do. I mean, even, even if nobody was listening, uh, I appreciate the ability to have a voice, right? That's amazing. So thank you guys. And, uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Cheers.